I shouldn't have said that, but I should say no more. I, uh, uh, I, I, I said, I'm sorry. We, we've been to the bank. The bank said no. We tried to raise the money. We, we, couldn't, we, we did not have $80,000. And so I, I went and um, uh, I said, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. And, and, and they said, well, I tell you what, we want you out by next week. And uh, the next, next couple days, they were on the other side of the country. They drove to where we were. They showed up. It was a cold winter's day. Winter just started to set in, 1st of November. And uh, they knocked on the door, and I went up to the church, and they called me from the, from the front door. And this is that November of 2001, and said, uh, we want our money. And, I, you know, we went through the same thing. They said, we're here. We want you to let us in. So I went upstairs, opened up the door. They came in and said, we want the money, or you guys are out of here the first of next week. You know, once again, I've got peace because i got a word. And so I went and, and I said, guys, I don't know what to do. And they said, we want you out by the first of the week. This is, the, this is like a Thursday. We've got till Monday to be gone. So I went downstairs once again, no fear, no dread, because I got a word. I uh, went downstairs, and I didn't, I didn't make it to the living quarters and, until the phone rang. And it was them again. They said, could you come back up and let us in? I'll never forget as that old boy stood there in that, that, the foyer of our church shaking his head. And he said these words, he says, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this. I wish somebody, some of y'all know where this is going, don't you? He said, I don't know why I'm going to do this, but I'm going to cancel your debt. Ain't nobody going to shout with me. You can't shout over that. God just canceled $80,000 worth of debt for you. You'd lose your mind. He said, I'm going to cancel your debt. And in that moment, God calls us to go from in debt to be debt free. Some of you under the sound of my voice tonight, I want you to know God's getting ready to take you from in debt to debt free. I, I don't know. But you know, Brother Patty, you got some faith. I know you got faith. Uh, but, but just want you to know, I, I don't know what you're paying rent. I don't know what it is. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just buy this whole place? Oh, come on, say, ain't nobody going to help me. Uh, somebody get a hold of this. Somebody ought to declare, I'm about to go from in debt to debt free. I'm about, my house is about to be paid off. I'm getting ready to drive cars that I don't owe anything on. Friend, I want you to know God's getting ready to do it for somebody. In the, uh, my God. i got to be careful what I say. Cause... So the Bible says there was a woman that was in the midst of a famine. And in the midst of a famine, God made a way for her to get blessed. So uh, listen, I, I, I began to declare the Isaac blessing over me and over everybody I come in contact with. You know what the Isaac blessing is? That means in a time of famine, God's going to bless you. And the Bible says that in the same year, God blessed him with a hundredfold. Somebody get a hold of that. Somebody say in the next 365 days, I got hundredfold blessing, hundredfold miracles that's come into my life. Now, y'all sit down just for a minute. Sit down just a minute because I'm not done with my testimony yet. And th thanks for reminding me to share this, uh, uh, Apostle Pat. I, I, uh, so, so that God let me be a conqueror that day. I mean, uh, we walked in, and from there, you know, we pastored that church for over 15 years. Uh, when we left, we didn't leave because anything was broken or bad. We left because God transitioned us once again. But uh, 2000 and, uh, 2015, I'm sitting on my couch. And I have one of our ministry partners contacts us and says, Brother Benny, what are you doing? Prophet Benny, what are you doing? I said, I'm just, you know, I, I wouldn't do anything spiritual. I wasn't praying. I wasn't fast. I was just kind of hanging out. And said, I got a prayer request. I said, what's going on? And she read this letter to me from the IRS. And, uh, and it said that you owe $80,000. As soon as that number was released, I recognized I have some experience in this. I got some experience in this situation. And this is what she says. Her name's Jamie. Jamie said, I, we owe it. My husband went through a divorce years ago and, and uh, some, got behind on some things. And, 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 and God blessed them and took care of them. But, but she said, we owe the money. But we don't have it. There's, and, and now we're racking up all these fees and it's getting worse. And, and uh, we've been trying to pay on it. And we've paid quite a bit of money on it. And we don't know what to do. And this is what she says to me. She said, Brother Benny, I want to send you $2,000. Now in the act, natural, that makes no sense whatsoever. See, sometimes you got to sow a right now seed for your not yet miracle. 
And she said, I want to sow $2,000. And I said, yo, man, that's just thank you so much. And, and uh, it, in fact, it was September of 2015 that this happened. So this, was, uh, this, this marks the anniversary of it, okay? And so, um, uh, man, a few days later, I get a check in the mail for $2,000. And, man, where we were in ministry, it was the right thing at the right time. You know what I'm saying? And so God blessed us. And, and so I'm sitting there, and, and uh, um, a few days later, I get a call, very excited Jamie on the phone. And she said, let me read this letter to you. She said, Prophet Benny, it says, we have considered your account closed and paid in full. Ain't nobody can help me now. She said, I consider the account closed and paid in full. And uh, it says, and enclosed is a check. See, some of you about to get back pay. Some of you about to get backed up blessing because uh, the enemy held some stuff up for you because of 2020. Maybe you lost some business. Maybe you lost some opportunity. God is getting ready to back pay you for the stuff, the opportunities that you missed out on. And everything that they had paid towards it, they had a check for it. My God, somebody get a hold of this. Some of you, I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. God has not forsaken you. But God's about to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you can't contain. And so the Bible says that, that this widow woman, this this widow woman, God speaks to her a plan. He, he tells her, I don't know how it worked out for her. I imagine she got up, she sat down on the side of her bed, flipped open her phone and started flipping through Facebook because that's what people do today, right? And she saw on there, God shall provide, you know. And something inside of her said, but don't, God don't know the situation I'm in. Said, I got this little bit of oil over here and this little bit of meal. Remember when the man of God said, Make a, bring me a cake. Remember that? She didn't even have a cake. She didn't even have it made. Some God will, sometimes God will ask you to do something that you've got to create it before you can even give it away. Come on, I, I don't know how God works with you. God tells me to give stuff away that I still got payments on it. When we relocated from, from Iowa to Arkansas, we sold, S-O-W-E-D, not sold, sold our home. Come on, somebody. You know what now? Now I got to harvest the houses. Now there's an anointing on my life for people believing for homes that, that they're going to get a home because we prayed because God had us do something that we could not do in the natural. Some of you, God's getting ready to do for you what you can't do for you. And even though it felt like you had to create it out of nothing, God's getting ready to take your nothing and make something out of it. I can see her as she's flipping through the through her Facebook and checking out the tweets of the day and, and she sees another one. God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And so here she is, and they're about to eat and die. She had to woke up hungry that day. She had to wake up with her, her natural man crying that uh, this makes no sense. Just go out there and eat that little bit. But in that moment, God must have spoke to her and said, Mama, I want you to go out there, and I want you to make a biscuit. Ain't nobody going to help me now. Come on, I don't know how it is right here. I know... Uh, St. Louis is the gateway to the south, right? Y'all know about some biscuits and gravy. Come on, Come on, you ain't lived until you had some biscuits and gravy now. Uh, so, so I had a friend of mine the other day uh, told me they'd never eaten anything but a canned biscuit in their life. I almost cried for him. That was a sad story. You ain't ever had a biscuit until you put that biscuit and that, that stuff in that bowl and you chunk that butter in there and start cutting it in there and pick up that, you know, I just excuse me while I shout all by myself. You pick up that little biscuit and you pat it down all the way around perfect. See, biscuits ain't biscuits. So when you get them and they all look the same, that's a messed up biscuit. Biscuits don't realize, look right, that's one of them's bigger than the other one and one of them's fat, one of them's skinny. Biscuits ought to look like the church. Messed up until you get it to you. Throw it in a pan. I'm going to throw my secret out there. You put your stick of butter in that cast iron skillet. Throw them biscuits in there. Ain't nobody to help me. That will make your tongue beat your face to death. I, I know 
know some of y'all, y'all probably don't eat pork, but ain't nothing like a big old piece of fat back. Ain't nobody gonna shout with me tonight. Woo, glory. I, uh, I, I can see her sitting there saying, I, I'm going to make me a biscuit. Make it just for me. I'm, I'm hungry, so I'm going to get me a biscuit. And the Lord speaks to her and says, I want that biscuit. And I can hear her begin to rationalize it out in her head. God, you don't need my biscuit. Come on. Because God's got all the biscuits he wants, right? He can speak to a biscuit and multiply that biscuit. I can hear her begin to speak to God that way. God, I just got enough for one biscuit for me and one biscuit my boy, and we're going to die. You can multiply these biscuits, right? So God, why don't you put your multiplication in right now? See, God will do that, but he's looking for an act of faith first. God can't multiply your biscuit until you give God your biscuit. Somebody says, well, he don't need my biscuit. No, he don't need your biscuit, but you need the obedience attached to you giving him your biscuit. Some of us in the church, we feel like Charlie Brown. God's always picking on me. Always telling me to do the hard stuff. Always telling me, why don't you tell the other, why don't you tell somebody else to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and pray? I don't want to do that. Why don't you tell somebody else to fast 21 days, water fast? God tells somebody else to do that. I used to feel that way, but then I realized that I was sowing seed, not for my present, but for my future. When I, when I sowed that house, when I gave that away, when I gave it away, I did not realize how many house miracles I would see. I was in uh, the very beginning of this journey. I was in Washington, Iowa. When I stepped out, when we resigned from the church and we moved to Fort Smith, Arkansas, that area. And I was working there at the church with Brother Bobby for a while, uh, for about six months. I worked there at the church, and, and uh, from that transitioned into a full-time evangelist. Uh, when I first stepped out and we gave everything up, I had two meetings for the year. This was March of 2016. Had two meetings booked for the year. Had a men's meeting in Washington, Iowa in March. And not another meeting until November. And God says, I want you to step out and go out on the road full time. I'm like, God, you better give me some kind of miracle in Washington, Iowa. Because the math ain't working. I mean, this better be a $100,000 miracle moment, God, because I'm going to need it. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and so, uh, man, we go there, and I remember the messages I preached. I remember I preached on uh, God, God, will use, God use Noah to build a church. I know, I know we think he built an ark, but he built a church. Another message for another day. And then I preached a second message that, that morning on God will get you through ugly. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I preached on Leah. Come on, everybody expected beautiful, but he had to go through ugly. You got to hear the message. Come on. I, uh, at the end of that service, I didn't even preach on sowing and reaping that day. But see, uh, there was something in the atmosphere. Last night we were talking about frequency. There was something in the frequency of the atmosphere that connected us into the supernatural. And at the end of that service, people ran up and started sowing. I mean, started throwing money. Started $1,000, $2,000, fifty. I don't remember what the offering was. It was one of the biggest offerings we'd ever had at that time. And so, you know, I'm just overwhelmed. And this young man comes walking up to me. And he hands me a check for $795. And I thought, that's an odd number, you know. It wasn't the biggest offering of that day, but it was the biggest sacrifice. And he looked at me, he's a pastor of a church in Des Moines, Iowa, looks at me and said, Brother Benny, the Lord told me to sow this. And I said, man, you know, that, I'm so, so honored that you would sow that into our ministry. We love you. We weren't even taking up an offering, church. And uh, I said, we love you, we honor you. And he says, well, hold on. He said, I'm about to get evicted from my home. He says, this is my rent. It's all I have. He says, I have the rent check made out to my landlord. But instead, I'm making this check out to you and your ministry to help promote the gospel. But if I don't pay my rent, if I don't give this landlord, to my, we're already behind. If you don't get this check by Tuesday, I'm about to be homeless. I have some experience. See, some of you got to get this in your head. See, if I'd have let God give me that $80,000 miracle back in 2001, uh, I'd have just been a conqueror. But now that there's an anointing in my life, that I can help others get the same miracle. 
Ooh, ain't nobody help me. Now I get to be more than a conqueror. God giving me a miracle house is one thing. But there be an anointing on my life to help others get the same kind of miracle. Now I get to become more than a conqueror. Me getting debt free, that's one thing. But when I can help everybody around me get debt free, then I become more than a conqueror. Friend, I, right now you might feel like you're going through hell, but God sent me here to St. Louis, Missouri to let you know that God was calling some people to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Said, uh, I said, what do you mean? He told me the story. He said, we're believing for a new home. And I said, uh, I said, what do you mean you're believing for a new home? Here they are about to lose their other. They're, they're about to be thrown out of their rent house. But they're believing for a new home. And it makes no sense in the natural. But that's God's kind of folk. That's the kind of folk God's looking for. So, uh, so I prayed with him. And, and uh, this once again, this is March. We fast forward to September. He calls me. Uh, we're scheduled to be with him in service in December. He calls me. He said, Brother Benny, you're not going to believe this. He says, there's a house we've been looking at. Uh, at this was, again, this was a few years ago. This house would be worth uh, almost three quarters of a million dollars today. Uh, he said, there's a house we're looking at. It's $350,000. He says, there's no way that we can afford it. I said, what kind of house can you afford? He said, I can afford about $125,000, $130,000 thousand dollar home he said but this house we're in love with the house he says the people said they'll work with us can you pray I sowed my seed see sometimes you got to recognize you got to sow your your uh, right now seed for your not yet miracle you got to sow in advance come on somebody and and so so he said, uh, he says, I call on my seed. Today God began to cultivate a message inside of me entitled, Obligate the Prophet. Sometimes we got to do things uh, that will obligate God to move in our lives. He said, I, I sowed that seed, so I'm believing for a miracle. So we prayed. We prayed in faith. You know, the Bible says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, right? So I began to pray. You know, we, we write books and go to seminars on how to pray and how to have faith and how to move God. Do you know the best prayer is the prayer that's needed in that moment, right? So I began to pray, and we began to seek God and uh, felt the anointing of God began to fall. He calls me back a few days later, and he says, Brother Benny, I put an offer in on that house. I said, what did you offer? He said, we offered $175,000. I said, uh, you, you said you could only afford $125,000. What about the $50,000 $50, difference? He said, well, you're not going to believe this. He said, a man walked up to me and just gave me a check for $50,000. Ain't, ain't nobody going to help me tonight. I said, man, that's awesome. He said, now I want you to pray that they accept my offer. I said, so you're believing for a $350,000 home, but you're only going to pay $175,000. But actually, you're just paying $125,000. He says, that's the kind of God I serve. Somebody, you ought to prophesy, that's the kind of God I serve. I serve a God that cancels dead. I serve a God that causes the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. Somebody get a hold of this tonight. He said, I'm believing for a breakthrough. I'm believing for a miracle. So I prayed with him. A few days later, he calls me back. And he said, Brother Benny, he said, uh, they accepted my offer. He said, I just got to write them a check for $50,000 and finish my financing. I'm done. That's not going to be an issue. He calls me a few days later. You're not going to believe this. The people who told him they'd give him $50,000 backed out. Well, that's just a hit to the gut unless you got a word. My God. Yeah. Man, that'll just take the air out of you unless you got something inside of you that says that God's going to move from me. I got a word inside of me that said God's going to break yokes of bondage off of me and my entire family. That God's going to set me free. I might be messed up from the chest up, but God's about to set me free. I might be tore up from the floor up, but God is getting ready to give me a miracle that's going to change my life forever. Undeterred, undeterred by the bad report, he said, "I went down to the to the uh, uh, what, what the title company so we could exchange money." And he said, "I don't got the money." And he said, "But while I'm sitting there, a man walked in out of nowhere." 
and handed me a check for $50,000 and said, God told me I was supposed to come give them. My God, somebody get a hold of this today. God's getting ready to send somebody a Boaz. God's getting ready to bring one person. Man of God, God's about to send one person into your ministry that's going to change everything. God's about to send somebody in that with one word. It's going to change everything. My God. I got to be careful. I, I don't want to get too wound up. got to keep myself together stay dignified he called me I went we this all had not all been settled yet in December when I was with them he called me first of the year as the year was changing so guess where I am I said where are you at he says I'm unloading my U-Haul <laughs> Said I'm moving into my new house. Today, that home's worth almost three quarters of a million dollars. Somebody should prophesy I'm next. You're next. Hey, you know, it might be a car, it might be a house. Listen, something I've learned, you know, kingdom of God is not just about cars and houses. But we can relate to that. You know, we can relate to that. We can, we can talk about that and understand that. Because, the I, you, you know, when I start believing folks to get up out of wheelchairs, it is no different faith that will get somebody up out of a wheelchair that will get somebody up out of debt. And I think it's harder sometimes to get people out of debt than it is to get them out of wheelchairs. Because sometimes we think this is just how life is. Baby, this is not just how life is. I want you to know how life is. Life is paying cash for that car. Life is when you're in the kingdom, you're not limited by the realms of this world and these systems. When you're in the kingdom, that's when you walk into that title company and you got a check in your hand and you pay cash for that house. I, uh, I, I don't know how I got so far off base. I'm just, just I've, I've done ran down a rabbit trail, but now that I'm down here, we got to hunt, baby. <laughs> We get a hunt until we get you to where God's called you to be. We get a hunt until we get you blessed going in, blessed coming out, blessed rising up, blessed lying down. You're gonna be blessed in the kneading bowl. You're gonna be blessed in the in the basket. You're gonna be blessed in the city. You're gonna be blessed in the field. If you're gonna walk in the door and they're gonna declare, there comes blessing. I uh, I was in I was in Chesterfield, Virginia. And I was sitting, y'all can sit down for a minute, don't get too comfortable. I was in Chesterfield, Virginia. I was preaching, and the church that, church that I went to, um, beautiful, one of the most beautiful sanctuaries I've ever been in in my life. Marble everywhere. Uh, beautiful, I mean, we used to call it TBN. It looked like TBN, that's how this looked. Gold everywhere, it was just beautiful. When I pulled on the parking lot, you name every luxury car you could ever imagine was in that parking lot. Um, you, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not about stuff. See, God wants you to be so blessed. I believe we're in the last day's church. God wants us so blessed that the world looks at us and the world envies us. That's God's plan for us. And we, uh, so I go in every car you could imagine was, there were Lamborghinis and Porsches and Mercedes and the church bus was a Mercedes and, and uh, we go in just a handful of people in there. I, I go while I'm preaching, God speaks to me, sends me to the back of the church. There's a couple sitting there. I've only had this happen three times in my ministry. There's a couple sitting in the back and the Lord spoke to them, spoke to me and said, tell them that I'm going to give them a multiplied hundred million dollar contract. I've never met him before in my life. I'm thinking, God, that's going to be a big, big step of faith. And Lord, Lord always does this stuff to me. I don't know how he talks to you, but he tells me, just go tell him what I said. So I went back and I began to pray with them. And, you know, uh, uh, you know you'd never look at them and know they had anything, you know. And uh, the Lord said, tell them that I'm giving, giving them a multiplied hundred, not thousand, hundred million dollar contract. I released that word over them. They began to shout and jump and run and flip. And Listen, first thing, when you get a word like that, you got to remember the prophet. Come on, somebody. you got to remember. God, that's how you obligate. And so, 
So they, they began to shout and jump and run after the service. Uh, uh, they, uh, they began, uh, the pastor began to share with me that they had a construction company and they did paving. And they just were working on a contract for the state of Maryland. That was a multiplied hundred million dollar contract. I'll go ahead, fast forward to the end. I tell you, we're gonna tell the end. Uh, they got the contract. Ooh, somebody get a hold of this. See, we have got to recognize when an anointing comes into our life. Let's get ready to bring. Praise change. God! I hope that you're enjoying today's broadcast. It is such a privilege and honor to have you tune in today taking time out of your busy day with so much going on to listen to this broadcast. I, and I hope it's been a great blessing to you. Before we let you go for the day, we just want to ask you to, to sow into this ministry. Man, we are we have such a privilege to make such a big impact on the United States of America and around the world. Right now, through our broadcast ministry, through our revivals, Facebook, YouTube, all the things that we're doing, we are reaching potentially 50 million people every week with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to do more. We want to do so much more for the kingdom of God. And you can help us do that. Maybe you can't go around the world and preach uh, like Prophet Benny does, but, but you can help me do it. And uh, I want you to know someday when we stand before the Lord, the Lord to give you the same reward because you couldn't go, but you sent someone. Amen. So I'm asking you, help send us around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that God will bless you for it. I believe that one of the jobs of the prophet is to declare blessing over God's people, just like the widow who just had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. But God sent her Elijah, who spoke a prophetic word over her, and because of her obedience, God opened the windows of heaven, and her meal didn't run out her oil didn't run out and he she and the entire family ate during the time of famine and then Elisha Elisha a woman comes to him who has nothing but a little bit of oil and the Bible says he said go and borrow vessels as many as you can and pour into those vessels and then go and pay your debt amen and live on the rest oh that's what an awesome word that's what the prophetic does my friend so I believe as you sow into this prophetic ministry God will allow the same blessing, the same miracles that we see to be imparted into your life and into your ministry. So again, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this broadcast today. All the information is right there on the screen. So go ahead and go to our webpage, uh, pay, PayPal, Cash App, all the ways to give. We appreciate your faithfulness so much. And listen, before you, uh, before you just sow once, go ahead and become a monthly partner. You can uh, partner with us every month and we'll send you a newsletter and updates on the ministry and let you, go and let you know what's going on. It'll be a great blessing to you, a great blessing to us in the kingdom of God. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you about this time next week. God bless. Have your best day ever.